Former Quebec Premier Jean Charest will be in Ottawa this week discussing the federal conservative leadership contest. For more on this, we're joined by Amanda Galbraith, principal and navigator, also a conservative strategist. Amanda, nice to talk to you this afternoon. It's interesting here because Jean Charest seems to be very much testing out the waters, but he's not giving any interviews. But I'm hearing from a lot of conservatives. I'm sure you are as well. What do you make of his potential return to federal politics? I think it would be a fascinating one, right, given his pedigree. Um, you know, the last time we had a leadership campaign, Sheree and a few others sort of kicked tires and decided it wasn't for them. Uh, but what I think we're seeing is he's mounting very much a serious leadership campaign team. Um, you know, they're sending out fundraising notes or, you know, founding membership notes, I should say, to kind of get people involved. Um, we're seeing, you know, what they like to do oftentimes before you get in the race is, is potential leadership candidates will sort of, like, you know, tease you, right? So, like, so now he's meeting with, um, MPs tomorrow in Ottawa. We've seen the open letter that came from Quebec and East Coast MPs. So I think certainly there is a, a very planned, steady flow of, of bringing him on board and sort of also cleaning up some of the issues that he had, including the investigation into potential corruption when he was the leader of the Liberal Party, which just announced earlier this week um, there was going to be no criminal investigation or charges filed. So, uh, you know, that's a good thing for him. So I think certainly him versus Polyev, who's the other main contender, would be a very interesting race uh, for Canadians and for Conservatives. It, it really would. Uh, that was interesting timing in what you just mentioned about the corruption uh, situation uh, in Quebec from years past. But let's move on from that and just talk about this, because a polyev charade contest would really be an interesting choice in the sort of current Conservative Party of Canada. Uh, Paul Yev, of course, uh, you know, a veteran of the Harper cabinet where you've got Jean Charest coming out of the Brian Mulroney era here. A lot of people seem to think the Conservative Party has moved beyond Mulroney, uh, perhaps even beyond Harper. How do you see the Conservative Party right now? Is there room for Jean Charest in the same party as Pierre Paul Yev? I think for the success of the party, there has to be room for a Jean Charest or more of a, he'd say, more of a moderate or a traditional PC type of flank. Um, it's it's certainly still present there. I think uh, Peter McKay tried to be emblematic of it in the last campaign. We saw Aaron O'Toole try and drag the party in that direction. So I think if conservatives want to be successful, we need to have a big tent, right? We have to run like conservatives, but we also need to be able to accept folks from across the political spectrum, much like the liberals very successfully do, much like Harper very successfully did. He had um, a very growing capacity. Uh, back, you know, group of MPs, um, some of whom are still participating in the party. Um, he had East Coast, uh, you know, MP MPs, which, you know, we have less of right now. So I think there's got to be room for it. But it's certainly a fight for the hearts and minds of what it means to be a Canadian Conservative. Uh, and I think Pierre Polyev, who's talking about freedom and sort of some of the more traditional I wouldn't say tra like traditional concepts of conservatism, but in a much more modern way using digital versus Charest, mm. who represents a more traditional PC Mulroney flank of the party will need to kind of demonstrate that he's able to kind of fight in modern politics because, you know, you say a week is a year in politics. Um, you know, he got out as premier. He has a very, um, you know, fabulous CV, but it's 2021. Um, so I think we'll all be looking to see what a modern charade campaign looks like. It's 2022, but that's beside the point. <laughs> that's okay. I'm, I'm with you there sometimes, Amanda, as well, especially the way the news cycle has gone. Uh, but, but you just said something really interesting. You said Aaron O'Toole was trying to drag the party that way. And that I see potentially as Charest's biggest problem. If he has to try to drag the party into that more traditional PC, uh, more centrist version of the party, that seems to be like his biggest challenge beyond the support across the country, just the idea of, of dragging the party along there. I think, you know, all leaders do this, right? And you've actually seen it very successfully done in Ontario under Doug Ford. He would, I think, if you look at his politics, right, he's considered a, a kind of a big force in the mm -hmm. conservative movement, but he very much operates a centrist-style government. There's a lot of policies he's put in place that probably would be adopted under the Liberals, but he does it in a way that is a touchstone to conservatives or his, is his voter base, right, which is workers and that sort of thing. So what I think a modern conservative leader needs to do is figure out how to speak to a more diverse base without sounding like what conservative, like the base would be. And remember, about 150,000 people voted on the last conservative leadership campaign. Canada is a, a country of 35 million, right? So this is a very small group of people that will choose this next leader. And they have very specific ideas about how they want to be spoken to. So the way a leadership runs is very different than the way a general campaign would run. And that's a challenge that all of them will face. Yeah, it's a race we'll be watching very closely here indeed. And I'm sure Amanda will talk to you throughout. Amanda Galbraith, principal and navigator and a conservative insider. Always appreciate the time. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.